very good morning children welcome to session 2 reproduction in the animals already in the previous uh, session we studied about uh, the definition that is reproduction a reproduction means the process of uh, producing the new organisms of a same species can be called as a reproduction and uh, which is very very important property of uh, all the living organisms like plants animals and uh, microorganisms and even we studied about viviparous and the viviparous animals viviparous means egg laying animals and viviparous means which lay uh, the young ones directly right without any eggs and even we studied about uh, the examples for uh, oviparous and the viviparous and even we learned how to identify the animal as uh, oviparous and uh, viviparous you know by observing two characters what are they yeah, there is a presence of uh, external ear and uh, epidermal hair. If uh, these two characters are present, then we call that animal as a, we can, uh, we can say that uh, that animal as a viviparous. And if uh, these are absent, then we can say as oviparous. Mm -hmm. And even we studied about uh, the asexual reproduction in a hydra, which is called as a bedding, you know, but with the help of bird, this hydra is able to reproduce, right? Now, let's come to the next topic that is asexual reproduction in uh, amoeba. You know, already we know about uh, this animal very well, amoeba, which is said to be unicellular organism. Unicellular organism. Unicellular means here the entire animal is made up of only one cell. Okay, that's why we can call this as a unicellular order or a single celled animal and where it lives it lives only in a water whether of course some in a fresh water and some in a uh, marine water or a salt water like this okay and uh, how this animal is able to reproduce means by a sexual process and uh, we call that the process as a fission <coughs> so here we can find this fission what is meant by fission fission means division division say for example take uh, a piece of chalk so it is a uh, very lengthy one okay when uh, you break that in the middle then what happens it divides into two halves yeah that is called a fission fission means division in the same way here the amoeba also divides into two okay that's why we call that as a fission so by using this forces this animal is able to reproduce so when now uh, you take this uh, parent amoeba parent amoeba means that means uh, the amoeba which is going to divide that is said to be parent amoeba so in a parent amoeba when nucleus matures nu uh, nucleus uh, matures matures means when it uh, completely grows up it completely grows up then what happens means so here see this is this is some um, uh, nucleus and when this uh, nucleus uh, completely matures or completely grows up then here you can find see uh, this uh, blue colored one first uh, this uh, nucleus elongates elongates means for example take uh, one rubber band then uh, we apply some pressure over that and uh, we pull that then what happens it uh, increases in size got it in the same way that here also what happens means the nucleus elongates like this lengthwise elongates uh, lengthwise and finally it divides into two for it now animal is only one but uh, nuclei or uh, two so when here see we can find uh, here one nucleus and here one nucleus but here this is the single animal got it so once the nucleus is divided then what happens means the body starts dividing here see here what you call this means this is called a uh, construction construction means uh, like uh, a small depression depression is formed and later this depression deepens like this got it so finally what happens so here we can find depression is a deepening and finally it divides into two dato amoebae two dato amoebae so in this way one parent cell is dividing into two dato cells got it okay that's why this is called as a fission fission right so here at the end of a fission how many data cells are forming so here observe this how many two or four 
2. So 2. That's why we call this process as a binary fission. Binary fission. Got it. Binary. Binary means what? 2. As the parent is dividing into 2, 1 and 2, we call this process as a binary fission. Got it, children? So this is the common method of a reproduction in a amoeba. Got it? So the process can be called as a fission and as we are getting a two data cells we call this process as a binary fission. So what is the method of reproduction in amoeba? There is a fission and that fission can be called as a binary fission. And in uh, some times what happens means one parent cell can be divided into many data cells many data cells and uh, in such case we call that as a multiple fission multiple fission multiple means many more than two okay that's why we call that as a multiple but uh, what is the common method common method of uh, fission in amoeba means we call this as a binary fission go to children right okay now <coughs> we go to understand this is the process how this a single parent is able to divide into two data cells got it okay now we're going to deal with uh, the next one what is this you know on our road signs and also in our surroundings we can find this flower have you seen this what do you call this yeah this is called a datura Dhatra and in Telugu we call that as a Ummeta, right? Already in a seventh class we studied about this flower. That means we studied uh, the complete uh, floral parts. Floral parts means which parts can be seen in uh, inside this uh, flower like this. You know that uh, all the flowers have the uh, four basic parts. What are they? Calyx, Corolla, Androsium and uh, Ganesium like this. Okay, and uh, here depending upon the sex of the flowers, the flowers can be divided into two types, right? Here, male and the female flowers. See, how you can find out which is a male flower and which is a female flower means, so when you observe this flower, here, this stalk, stalk of the flower, this is very, very narrow. Just below the flower, we can find a narrow stalk in case of a male flower. But when we observe this female, in case of female, just below this uh, flower, we can find a much uh, bulged structure. Bulged structure. Got it? Here and even here also we can find, see? In case of this, we can find a bulged structure below the flower. But in case of male, we cannot find like this. Got it? So, by observing uh, this character, we can say whether that flower is a male flower or a female flower. Right? Okay. Now, Let's go to the next process. So already we studied about this. That means that this is a Dhatra flower. And when now we take this Dhatra flower, here we can find a, a two types of parts. Right? So when now we take this ovary, ovary, then a style and a stigma. These are three belongs to which part? That is a female part. But uh, when we take a Sorry. And when now we take this uh, stamen and even here, what is this? This is a anther. This is a anther. Right? So, in this way, inside the flower, we can find uh, two sexes, male and uh, female. Right? And uh, when we take this uh, anther, when anther matures, it produces fine uh, dust like particles what do you call them yeah we call them as a uh, pollen or a pollen grains and now these pollen grains these pollen grains they come under uh, right they come under uh, attached to this uh, stigma part stigma right so what do you call the process the process can be called as a uh, pollination and once the pollination is over, then uh, pollen grain will be there itself. But uh, later, the pollen grain will uh, develop a tube, and that tube is called a pollen tube. Pollen tube. Now, 
that the pollen tube passes downwards through this uh, style and here what is this base this is a uh, ovary and inside this ovary we can find a female part that is said to be ovule there is a ovule and uh, here in a uh, pollen tube we can find a male reproductive cells male reproductive cells now inside this inside this ovary what happens male reproductive cell combines with the female reproductive cell got it male reproductive cell combines with the female reproductive cell and forms a zygote and forms a zygote here see see male reproductive cell fuses fuses means combines combines with the female reproductive cell and forms a zygote and what is this a zygote zygote uh, later develops into fruit right and uh, the fruit uh, inside the fruit what you can find you can find the seeds and when the seeds are sown in the soil then they develop into they develop into new plants so this is the way how this uh, sexual reproduction occurs in case of uh, plants in the same way in animals also sexual reproduction takes place by the fusion of male reproductive cell with the female reproductive cell here this is uh, the definition for sexual reproduction what is that fusion of male reproductive cell with the, the female reproductive cell is called a sexual reproduction and uh, what is the result of this the result is this a uh, zygote okay we get zygote and uh, zygote develops into fruit in case of uh, plants but in case of animals what happens means this zygote develops into young one got it so when we take this animals in case of animals also the same process occurs what do you call this uh, male reproductive cell male reproductive cell is called as a sperm it is called as a sperm and uh, the female reproductive cell is called as a ovum got it now this uh, sperm and the ovum they join with each other they join with each other and forms a zygote okay and this zygote develops into the young one or the, the baby got it okay so this is in case of uh, animals right so whatever whether it is a plant or an animal the mechanism is the same that means the male gamete or the male reproductive cell combines with the female reproductive cell and forms a zygote got it okay so it's about this uh, uh, sexual reproduction and in the coming class we are going to deal with the sexual reproduction in the human beings right okay that's all for today have a good day thank you